Did you eat the whole thing? Joseph, your breakfast is ready. Is it literally sprinkling right now? No. Oh, yuck. I set my coffee by the green wire. Nope, I'm gonna hold my coffee. You're gonna hold it, because that will spill. Well, good morning, everybody. I am gonna ride along. I'm gonna ride along a little bit with Warren here. You're gonna have to talk because I honestly don't even know what we're going to do. <laughs> well, actually, uh, I flooded the marsh again because of the cold weather. So we have to shut some bulkheads off where the flood is already deep enough. Uh, we gotta keep the water moving on other beds that need more. It's so cold right now, yeah, and it's actually freezing with a wind, so the sprinklers just will not protect the buds. So we are flooding, and mm -hmm. we're flooding because we can. We have a lot of water this year, uh, so it's kind of a no-brainer to flood them up, although it's a lot of extra work, but uh, you have to protect that crop. I guess I'm looking at up there and not down there so <laughs> that's okay <laughs> all right let's go yeah, let's go so a little bit of backtrack you know what is my seatbelt gonna ding no or is the no i have the little the, thing uh, in whatever that's called seatbelt delay seatbelt delay um so just to backtrack a little bit in the spring as the ice melts off of the cranberry beds um, and the temperatures start to warm up, which we had one really, really warm week, uh, what happens is that the, the bud that is going to produce this year's growth and Cranberry flower, crop. and, and they're, the whole crop, the everything's whole, wrapped up in that bud. Right, it actually produces, it was actually producing last year, right? Or forming last year, and now <coughs> this year, you have well, to protect it. Yeah. The buds form in the fall for next year's crop. See, drinking coffee in a moving truck does not work. <laughs> not on this uneven ground, right? No. <laughs> So if I'm reading correctly what you're doing, you're actually blocking this bed off because you feel that this bed is flooded to the level you want it flooded, right? Yeah, there is not an upright sticking out, so right. they're protected. Yep. So he just is putting in those boards so that no more water runs onto the bed and no more water runs off of the bed. Right. Because was this the running into the bed? It was running in. Yep, this was the running in. So he's blocking yeah. it so no more water runs into this bed because there is a tube, am I in the right spot? Yep. That goes underneath over into this cranberry bed. And this one still has uprights sticking out that have to get flooded over. So now he wants to block, so blocking that will also block water from not coming off of this bed. Right. <laughs> Correct? Right. <laughs> okay, and it is windy today. So we're at the same cranberry bed as where he just put boards in and he's actually going to put another board in here because this is the outlet bulkhead and since oh no we're not in the same one all right anyway we're one bed over but he wants these beds to stay 
at the level of water that they have on them already and so he put a board in to block any water from going out because on that side there is a ditch and underneath this road here there's a tube and the water would go down to that ditch over there and so this is what there's basically two types of cranberry marshes Ours would be like what do you what do you call this? <laughs> well, this one uh, is a gravity flooded marsh. Uh, the two types basically, you either gravity flood or you pump mechanical pumping to get the water on. And mechanical pumping takes a lot of uh, horsepower and diesel fuel to move the water. We're here, our reservoir system sits higher than the cranberry bed, so we're able to flood through gravity. The only thing is, if it's a normal year, we can drain the water away and it's not a problem. But on a dry year, you have to pump the water back to recycle it. And that takes diesel fuel and of course pump. So this bed here is not completely flooded. You can see that there's cranberry vines um, sticking out all throughout. So you're thinking that this one will flood. The goal is by this afternoon? Yeah, by supper time it'll by supper be time. under. checking the flow and that's good this is where all of the water that goes onto the cranberry beds this is where it all comes from really fun game. It's very intense. Days like today really require a little cuddling yeah, yeah. in on the couch <laughs> and doing some reading. So I just wanted to mention, especially those of you who are homeschooling, um, Warren was just out in the office doing um, bills and I had gone out there and I said something. I said, well, I said, we're going to read and then we're going to start school. And I stopped. I hesitated. I was like, why do I say that? Start school? Because and then he's like, yeah, he said, you've been doing things all day. They've already, we learned a brand new card game and we were playing cards, weren't we? And they were doing, playing on the piano this morning and taking care of chickens and doing little chores. I always think about it too, you know, in a school when kids have, you know, at home they're doing chores, but at a school they do different kinds of chores too, don't they? They're, someone has to go get the milk mm -hmm. or someone has to take up the attendance sheet if they even do that anymore now it's probably all on the computer right but there's always little jobs isn't there that kids have to do at a school passing out papers things like that at home it's just different and so even though we i always use that term oh it's time to start school i sometimes have to like stop myself and say everything we're doing is learning mm -hmm. i mean we were having 
No school, yay! <laughs> we were having like taste yeah. tests. They were having taste tests before of different flavors of, I don't know, a little water, those little water packets or whatever. So lots and lots of learning. Anyway, I know, I just kind of babbling on about that, but now we're gonna read from Mary Poppins. I have written my name inside this from grade three. That's how long I've had this book since that would have been like 19, 79 maybe? How good of a writer maybe. were you? Becca? I was a pretty good writer, I would say. Wow! Yeah. Really, said Mary Poppins, really, such behavior. I can't help it, I can't help it, shrieked Michael as he rolled into the fender. It's so terribly funny. Oh, Jane, isn't it funny? Jane did not reply, for a curious thing was happening to her. As she laughed, she felt herself growing lighter and lighter, just as though she were being pumped full of air. It was a curious and delicious feeling, and it made her want to laugh all the more. All right, we're finished reading now. And I guess what I wanted, the point that I wanted to make, which maybe I didn't make real clear, is that sometimes as homeschooling moms, we get caught up in this, we have to be like starting school. And so much of our day is learning, right? I mean, because for kids, um, everything that we're doing is new. They're always learning something new. And it's kind of like if we were to get a new job or something like that, right? We're just like, every day, we're learning something new, we're learning something new. Um, Peter's gonna make some lunch for him and Maria now. He's gonna make some ramen. One or two. Whatever you guys think you need, one or two. So the moral of all of my babbling here is to just, just relax a little bit and allow your day sometimes to just naturally unfold and for natural learning to occur. That's quite okay. I mean, I, I guess my own personal opinion is that not every single day should be like that, that there should be days where they learn to kind of sit down and work on some worksheets and read from a book and answer some comprehension questions. <laughs> I do think that that is important, but I don't think that that is the be all end all. Learning can take a lot of different approaches and they all have their place and they all have their time and they all have their day. All right, so, and look at this. As I'm yakking to you guys, Maria is putting together the States puzzle. So again, just natural learning. I didn't force her to do that. She actually said, hey, can I have the map puzzle? So she's working on it um, under her own will, right? <laughs> A nice t-shirt. And country life. Our country life. I. <laughs> we do have t-shirts. Navy blue and blossom pink if you're interested in those. Yes, Peter, what would you Wait, like to say? Long sleeve t-shirts. They are long sleeve t-shirts, you're right. But, and I learned what different counties were in Wisconsin just today. I didn't know there was that many counties. You didn't know we had that many counties? No. No. Today for lunch, we just did a grouping of leftovers. We had plenty of leftovers from the weekend, so that's what we did. Actually, I guess Peter did make him and Maria a package or two of ramen, so they ate that. And we tried to use up the leftovers, but we still have leftovers plus leftover ramen. So I guess I have a start on tomorrow's lunch already then. Now for supper tonight, oh, and Maria's our dishwasher this lunch. Mm -hmm. We didn't do them at breakfast, so we actually have breakfast and lunch today. So she's gonna wash that as I get ready for supper here. So we are gonna have this half ham. This is a uh, off the bone ham. And I picked this up at Pick and Save off of the reduced, the reduced meat area. So the Pick and Save going one direction to like one town <laughs> that I can shop in at, they actually pull all their meat and put it in one location. The other Pick and Save where I went to a different town, they actually kept it on the shelf by all of those items. So it was definitely different looking for um, the reduced stickers. So I know people have said like, where do you find those? Well, it really depends. You just kind of have to have a time where you go into your store and you're not in a rush and you just kind of start looking. like looking at all the departments, looking at the, the tags and everything, and you'll start to kind of figure out your store that you go to most often. So I'm just gonna get this put into the crock pot here on low. I'm not gonna add anything to it. I'm just gonna, just the juices that are in the bag, I'm actually just gonna let those all go right into the crock pot and we're gonna warm this until supper time. Are you guys staying warm enough? Mm-hmm. Okay, because it's pretty cold out there. I know. What's oh, the- Oh, Peter moved all the furniture? Oh my goodness, why did he do that? I don't know, I thought we were 
we're just gonna work around him. But okay. Looks like he's cleaning off the patio. It looks great. Huh? It looks great. Wow, thank you. Yeah. When you're all done, you're gonna put everything back though, right? Oh yeah. Okay. We're gonna chop the whole thing and then put the chairs on it. Okay, cool. Have fun. I'm gonna stay in where it's warm and I'm gonna fold laundry. I'm hoping the towels, oh, they're still warm. Oh good, that's gonna feel so good. It is afternoon and I really want to get something in the oven to bake because it is so cold in the house. We had to shut down the wood burner for the year and so now it's just gas heat and boy gas heat just doesn't do it for me. So here we go. I'm starting in on making some banana bread because look at these bananas. <laughs> They really, 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 really need to be used. This recipe is in A Country Life Cookbook Volume 2. It's on page 44 and it's just a standby banana bread recipe. It is literally the best ever. And if you're following along in the cookbook, you're gonna notice that the ingredients might look a little bit different here, just because I'm actually one and a halfing this because since I have four bananas, I'm gonna one and a half the recipe. turn the camera on. Just filmed a whole section without the camera even turned on. I am waiting for the oven to preheat to 300 degrees, which is what you would call a slow oven. And that is what keeps this bread so moist, in my opinion, is that you cook it kind of low and slow. So I just want to address a comment that was made on uh, the pantry cooking video. That was two videos ago. If you didn't see that, you're going to want to go watch that video um, if you're trying to save some money on your grocery budget just to show that you don't have to grocery shop all the time just to get all the perfect ingredients. So I'm not reading the comment exactly, but basically the comment read something like this. I'm really surprised or amused or something about how surprised or amused you are, meaning me, as to the fact that you're able to put together meals by just going into your pantry. That was kind of what the person was saying directed at me. And then they said, this is what I've been doing my whole life is just grocery shopping and then putting together a meal every single day that they hadn't really ever a done meal plan. Now, and that's great. <laughs> I was not saying in that video, I wasn't trying to say that this is a whole new concept. What I was, the point that I was trying to make, which obviously I might, must have been a little unclear about, is that, so I hear from, uh, from other mothers when I'm like visiting and things like that, that they are running to the grocery store all the time. Oh, I had to run to the grocery store today because I had to pick up this. I had to run to the grocery store because I had to pick up that. And I wanted to just kind of make the point in the pantry cooking video that even without a meal plan, that most of us can probably save a few dollars and a few trips to the grocery store by just sourcing our pantry and thinking a little bit about it and being willing to try something new or being willing to have a very simple meal. It doesn't always have to be fancy. Sometimes a supper, like you saw in that video if you saw it, um, we had like hot turkey sandwiches. I mean, it was just lunch meat. It was just deli lunch meat that I, 
I put onto toasted buns with some cheese, and I think that night we had chips and like something else like that, maybe cottage cheese, <laughs> just something really, really simple. And that was kind of the point behind the pantry cooking video is that, you know what, just stop for a moment, think for a second, and don't just run off to the grocery store because, oh my gosh, what are we gonna have for supper tonight? I don't have anything. No, I bet you do. <laughs> you might not have anything that's going to be fast and fun and whatever, like a restaurant meal, but I'm pretty sure you have something that you can make a meal out of. And oftentimes our families are probably least critical of the meal than we are ourselves of our meals that we make. You know, I know that I find sometimes I'm like, no, I don't really want, I mean, just hot dogs and chips and pickles for supper? That doesn't feel like a supper to me. That feels like a lunch. Why? Why do I think that? You know what? My family is going to be fed and we can move on with the evening even if we have hot dogs, chips, and pickles for supper. Okay, so off my soapbox on that one. Um, tonight's supper is the ham. I already showed you that and it's starting to smell good in here. Um, and then I have one, two, three, four, and is that five? Five potatoes left. I'm going to make these into mashed potatoes. I will add some water to this later when I take the ham out, depending on how much liquid is in there, and make a gravy for supper. I'm going to go down and get some frozen vegetables out of the freezer, and that is going to be our supper for tonight. Most likely with this meal, I will put some canned applesauce with it because last year, I canned well over 100, like 120 quarts of applesauce, and yeah, we've been eating it like crazy. We've been eating it like crazy, so I think I might do applesauce again, or I have some fresh apples in here, or I have cuties, or I have canned peaches. I'm gonna run down to the freezer, and I'm gonna pull out a bag of vegetables, and I think since the bread, the banana bread will be done in the oven, I think what I'm going to do is actually do one of these vegetables that has to bake. Actually, we have not had corn in a while, and so I thought I would just pull out um, some frozen corn. And this one is actually from 2021, so I should probably get that one used up. And um, I'll just cut this bag right off of this. I'm going to put it into a kettle and put it on low and just let it low and slow again, and it will be ready for supper tonight. And Maria needs some help. So she's actually working on some of her seat work right now. And what is she doing? She has to add pluses and minuses to equal numbers. Are you doing this one right here? Number 20? Well, I need some help with this one. You need some help with that one? Okay, I so what do we have? All the numbers except this. Oh, <laughs> you just because crossed off all those. Too hard. Oh, oh well, let's hard. let's work through it. So, could we start off by going nine minus eight? That's one. One, one plus six. Let's try that. Seven. Okay, and then what should you do? Maybe. I don't know. What could you do? Seven. Maybe try plus. Plus three, eight, is, and ten. Mm -hmm. Minus five is five. Plus three is eight. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, I need to help with this one. Oh, you're going to have to do the next one by yourself now. Oh, I can't do that. So in this dark pan, and these being smaller, this only took 40 only took 45 minutes. I have one more in there, the big one, and that's going to take a little bit longer. But today I've actually been working just real slowly here through the Monday Home Blessing. That was actually two weeks ago today that I was working through the Monday Home Blessing and ended up breaking my toe. <laughs> and it's feeling pretty well. There's a weird little zing. So, like, I still have to walk with that one toe lifted up, which is kind of kind of just weird. But anyway, um, it's, it's way better. I changed a couple beds of sheets over the weekend, so I'm not changing any sheets today. Joe actually went around and did all the trash cans for me. Maria and I tag teamed on the dusting. I'm going to do some vacuuming right now. Maria is watching a show right now, so when she's done, I'm going to have her sweep the hardwood floor. Then I'm going to come through and mop, and I'm going to do culling of newspapers, catalogs, magazines. Shouldn't be too much because it was just done two weeks ago. And then this never did get done, so I should probably make sure I get to that today.
So do you guys all remember when cords on small appliances in the kitchen were long? I have this plugged in over here by my stove and I'm walking and walking and walking all the way across. I think this is probably a 10 foot long cord. Anyway, those were the days when things were that long. Now all the cords on everything, little crock pots, they're like two feet long if you're lucky. Um, okay, anyway, I'm gonna stop that little rant and I'm gonna just slice up. Oh, no, I don't have that right, oh boy. An enormous How about you start with that? Mm -hmm. Potatoes, Joe. Is it stuck? No. 